Today, we are going to be simulating the full career of the best goalie to ever exist. Scott Sterling is 99 overall, right out of the gate, loaded with abilities, ready to go. Now, the last time we simulated the full career of a franchise goaltender, they finished with 689 wins and a 913 save percentage, 270 GAA. 82 shutouts now for this video i am going to be changing the settings so that there's not a lot of goal scoring going on unlike the 99 overall player we just simulated i am changing all of these settings to be low instead of high so let's get it started here and see what happens your honor i would like to once again point out how undervalued goalies are in this game, evidently, as Scott Sterling is a 99 overall high franchise netminder, and he's supposed to go fourth. Here's the draft lottery, so it looks like he might end up in Chicago. There is no goalies retiring, not a single netminder said, hey, I'm done this year. So that's wild. He ends up going to Pittsburgh at the fifth pick, and I'm just showing you now that all the settings are in fact set to low, which is the exact opposite than we did for our 99 overall player. Here are the Pittsburgh Penguins looking very similar to their real roster, except for Carlson. I'm not really sure where he is, but anyway, they finished seventh in the entire league. So that is a great introduction to the NHL. He has 38 wins, and you can see that the save percentages are already nuts. So clearly, those settings do something. He did get snubbed, though. Doesn't get the Calder. Kachekov. Another goalie will take that from him. And Carey Price decides that he is done after year number two here. So does Bubbles. Showing you the generated prospects, you can see that the first overall pick doesn't even have a gold X factor. And the second overall pick has no abilities whatsoever. So that setting also being put to work here early on. Not much changed in the Pittsburgh organization. And obviously, Sterling did sign the three-year entry-level contract. I didn't bother showing it. They finished fourth in the Metropolitan Division, a 935 save percentage, and a 942 in 11 playoff games. That is nutty. Gets the Vesna in just his second NHL season, and they would be deleted by the Capitals in round number two. That is a classic matchup that usually did not go in favor of the Capitals. At least I felt that way as a Capitals fan. I feel like we got dusted a bunch of times by the Penguins. They pick up Patrick Kane, channeling their inner Ottawa Senators here from our franchise mode, grabbing an old Hattie Kane. Let's see if he can get some points here. Scotty played 71 games and had a 925 save percentage. That is unreal. We check the player stats as well, just so you can see that there really isn't any players going off. So again, those settings are working a bit here, but the draft class quality seems to have improved quite a bit in that season. Sterling still obviously going to be the starter, signs a new four-year contract at $12.3 million, and not a good first year on that contract as the team finishes seventh in the Metro. Murray had a full season with a sub-2 GAA, and he's not the only one. A 932 for Scotty, and his team didn't even make the playoffs. This is fascinating to me. Patrick Kane decides he's done after signing with the Pens there. Malkin also retired, and so does Flurry. Three players to be related to the Penguins. I feel like that happens a lot in this simulation. I'm not sure why it worked out that way, but it did. The team looks a little bit rough around the edges. I think they're throwing. They finished sixth in the Metro with 37 Ws on the season. And as you can see, Pasta led the league with 85 points. That is not a lot. So this setting is obviously working some wonders here. A 928 save percentage and 213 GAA. This man is on pace for some ridiculous retirement stats. Bobrovsky retires as a Toronto Marley with 445 wins. The team's still looking a little bit worse for wear here. And somehow they make it into the playoffs. They finished seventh in the entire league. I don't know how they pulled that off, but they managed to do it. Dreisaitl up at the top of the league with 86 points. Sterling a 927 save percentage. Not so great in the playoffs, however, having just a 904. And the Devils made light work of them. The Bruins actually winning their second cup in three years. And Ovi and Backstrom retiring together. So again, another relatable retirement. Jonathan Quick at the top of that year's retirement class. 
Now the Penguins are kind of cooking. They picked up Adam Fox. Defense wins championships type beat over here in pity. And I'm going to check the playoff stats just for fun this time for the whole league. The Penguins, once again, light work. Did not go well. They got swept in the first round. But yeah, not a lot of points being put up, but a lot of saves being made. Scott picked up the Vezina this year, but they would be swept in the Battle of Pennsylvania round one. Not what you want to see. Markstrom, just shy of 300 wins. Come on, you got to get there. I guess Scott was getting a little bit tired of playoff mediocrity. Decided to give the Shark Tank a go. They are gold miners over here. Look at all those X-Factors. Signs a nearly $20 million contract for the next seven years. That is a thick contract. He puts up a sub-2 GAA in his first year. Nearly a 930 save percentage. They would not make the playoffs, however. Vancouver Stanley Cup champions, Corpy Solo, top retiring netminder. Here we are once again in San Jose. Aiden Hill, the backup. They missed the playoffs for the second straight year. Pretty good stats from Sterling, though, and I guess just the other goalies. You could compare that to regular simulations. The Toronto Maple Leafs take home the Stanley Cup, and Pasta retires less than point a game. So that's how you know that the settings that we changed are in fact doing something, at least. This year, we see a full second line of real prospects, which is cool. The Sharks finally able to make it into the playoffs. However, Scotty did get injured in the playoffs. So much for 99 durability. I think that's a goalie stat, right? Anyway, he was slaying it, had a 950 save percentage, 1.63 GAA. The Oilers would end up taking them down, though, in seven. So their playoff success still lackluster. Same fate as Pittsburgh, it would appear. A bunch of very talented goalies retired that season. Now the Sharks pick up Leon Dreisaitl, who is 82 overall, and they finish third in the entire league. 110 points. How about that? Chicago's first line, by the way, the top three point getters. That is pure insanity. I wonder if that's ever actually happened in the NHL. The Vesna would go to our boy. And on top of that, McDavid and Dreisaitl retiring together. Seriously, what is going on with this? Thatcher Demko is up there at the top. But again, there is a very talented group of netminders retiring in year 12 there. After Dreisaitl, it is Kirill the Thrill's time to make a pit stop in San Jose. Hugo, definitely the starter. Yeah, I think Sterling should be the backup there. Um, he did play a nice amount of games. Also, 25 playoff games with a 936 save percentage. He did it. Stanley Cup champion, and they did it in seven games. Wow, that was a crazy final. I can only imagine. Vazzy retires with 623 wins. Is that any good? It is. Spoiler alert. Let's see if the Sharkies can pull it off again here. They finish 8th in the league. 101 points, 46 wins. Sterling with a 934 save percentage and a 182 GAA. However, the playoff hopes were cut very short. Only 5 games. He did get both the Jennings and the Vesna, however. But the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim bury them in round number 1. Igor Shesterkin and Sorokin both calling it quits in year 14. Still with the Sharks here, the team starting to maybe look a little bit worse, I think, but that could also just have to do with how far into the sim we are and the lowered draft class quality. They finished fourth in the Pacific Division. Sterling had the second most wins, and on top of that, made it to the Stanley Cup Final, but didn't get another cup. That could have been two in three years, but so close, yet so far, they couldn't pull it off. Katahat, ever so close to 400 wins, but not quite able to get there. Done with the Sharks now is Scotty at 97 overall, moves over to the Boston Bruins, signs a four-year deal at about 20 mil. He is just eating cap space. The team does well. However, they don't make the playoffs because the Atlantic was completely stacked this season. Detroit wins the Stanley Cup, and Matthews is done. Even he wasn't point a game. So that's saying something right there. Kachekov, the Calder winner, retires that season along with Logan Thompson and Stewie. Rasmus Dahlin making his retirement pit stop here in Boston. Now down to 96 overall. Scott Sterling and the Bruins miss the playoffs just barely. Bedard gets the second most points in the league. It's always fun trying to find 
especially really late on in franchise mode, just people with pictures. People that actually are real and not generated. Quinn Hughes. Look at him go. Had more points than Jimmy Superstar. He did play like 50 or 60 more games, but still. That is a very impressive run from him. And a not very impressive run from Jimmy Superstar. This year, the Bruins finished sixth in the entire league. Sterling up there third. Four wins and a sub two GAA in the playoffs. Did very well. He had his guy, but... The team couldn't get it done. It would be another Vesna and Jennings winning season for Scotty. So he's stacking up on the individual hardware. In year 18, it would be Levi accompanied by Wolf and Askarov headed for retirement. The Bruins once again making the playoffs with 88 points. So not a great year, but they managed to sneak in. Sterling also down to 92 overall and only puts up a 907 save percentage. So really starting to tail off here. The Red Wings put them out in six games. And we got Sawyer. Tom Sawyer. Um, what happens in Vegas definitely doesn't stay there. Because I can instantly pull up all kinds of Golden Knights home statistics if I wanted to. But anyway, they finished last in the Pacific Division with only 29 wins. They had absolutely no offense. 55 points was their team leader. Somehow, Sturls managed to put up a 9-12. And yeah, of course, they were not in the playoffs. They weren't even close. A bunch of prospects retiring this year. And Jesper with 428 losses. Come on, man. Look at all that gold. Sterl's going to be backup duty for the first time in his entire career. And once again, the team has literally no offense. They failed, finished seventh in the Pacific. Same percentage is decent there. But yeah, definitely didn't get a whole lot of starts. Gabriel Daggle. The top retiring netminder with 513 wins. That's pretty solid. My man's back on the move. He lands in DC. And the time is split somewhat evenly between these two netminders here, both 81 overall. Signs a one-year, $3 million contract. They finish fourth in the Metro, but they can't quite make the playoffs, unfortunately. Sterling's numbers are 100% dropping, and it would be a Detroit Red Wings Stanley Cup championship this year. Zach Benson drafted in the same class as our boy Scotty, who would also retire with 672 wins and a 926 save percentage, 215 GAA, 146 shutouts, and also 26 hamburger helpers. So somehow, he managed to get 26 assists in his career. I don't know if that's a lot, but it seems like a lot to me. Here are the playoff stats. 47 wins, a 931 save percentage in the playoffs. Talk about Captain Clutch. All right, I hope you guys found that as interesting as I did. I thought it was really cool. And obviously it was very different seeing players not really putting up points and seeing goalies making a ton of saves. So thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy it, if you could hit like, that'd be greatly appreciated. If you could subscribe, that would also be super hot fire, but you don't have to, of course. Just, uh, you know, be, be a cool little thing there, maybe. Thank you for watching. I will see you soon.